Hello everyone, a well-traveled gamer here, or the well-traveled gamer here, I should say. And what you're watching in the background is a little bit of Diablo 3 Definitive Edition. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, these Definitive Editions that have come out both in 2014 and 2015. And basically what I think of that trend and if I think it's going to continue into 2016 and beyond. And so let me just preface this by saying that I don't have a huge issue with these uh, definitive edition uh, re-releases of games that came out on the PS3 and Xbox uh, 360 necessarily. Um... I do think some developers are trying to double dip on games that were previously released and they're releasing these games a second time on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One at full retail price, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in depth here. And that's what I don't agree with. I mean, if you're going to re-release these uh, Definitive Edition games, you need to do it how Devil May Cry did it and release the game at, you know, $39.99 at at a lower price point. Even if you do put a lot of downloadable content in the game, it still doesn't make it right that you release a old title for full retail price. And for those of you that don't know or that have been living underneath a rock for the last couple years since uh, the PS4 and Xbox One came out, um, this definitive edition trend has been a hot topic with a lot of different uh, gaming outlets and everybody has a opinion on it and I'm going to give mine here in a moment but I'm going to list off just a few games that have come out recently just to show you guys I mean how many of these things have come out since the PS4 and Xbox One dropped all right we have Grand Theft Auto 5, The Last of Us Remastered, Diablo 3 Ultimate Edition, which you're watching right now in the background, Rayman Legends, Minecraft, PlayStation 4 Edition, Devil May Cry Definitive Edition, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Borderlands The Handsome Jack uh, Collection, which is dropping tomorrow, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, which I really don't know why the hell they uh, released a definitive edition of that game because nobody played it when it first came out anyway. And then you have Halo, the Master Chief uh, Collection for the Xbox One. Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin is re-releasing on April 7th. Saints Row 4, re re-elected. I'm sorry, I can't talk today. And that's another game. I mean, Saints Row 4. I mean, why re-release that game for the PS4 and Xbox One? All right. I mean, I could understand re-releasing Grand Theft Auto 5 and The Last of Us and even a Diablo here because Diablo looks awesome on the PlayStation 4 and it plays just, it's smooth. I mean, this game is just, it's very fast. There's no uh, load times. There's no lag. I mean, it looks awesome. But there's some games that did not need to be released a second time. Saints Row 4 being one of those games. And we're coming to the end of March. And so far, 2015 has been very underwhelming when it comes to new game releases. So far, 2015 has given us such memorable games as The Order 1886, which besides its graphics, that game was a... Hyped up interactive movie. Nothing more, folks. Uh, sorry to say, but that was not a good game at all, in my opinion. Then you had Evolve, which I actually put about 25 hours total into Evolve. I had a great time with the game. My gripe is that there weren't enough monsters. There was no story plot at all. And the map sizes and what the maps looked like were very blasé. I mean, they were very plain Jane, not a lot going on. And uh, the developers could have put forth more of an effort releasing more um, monsters 
And they could have put more of an effort behind the story of the game because the story is non-existent. I mean, it is just, yeah, I mean, the story is not there. Um, so you had Evolve, and then most recently you had Battlefield Hardline, which is another generic first-person shooter in a long line of generic first-person shooters. And I'm done with the Battlefield series and Call of Duty series. I mean, unless something groundbreaking comes out, I won't be buying or playing another one of those games. Um, I like the preface that I did buy and enjoy Battlefield 4. That game was all right. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, with those kinds of games coming out, with such a lackluster lineup of new games, the trend of definitive edition game releases will no doubt continue through 2015 and beyond. I know a lot of people said that this was a trend that needs to end, but I'm here to say that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Until these game devs can put out new IPs that people actually want to buy instead of remaking, rehashing this old, worn out garbage, these uh, definitive editions are really the only thing saving the PS4 and Xbox One right now. Um, honestly, the best games on either the PS4 or the Xbox One right now are re-releases from the previous console generation. And that's a very sad statement considering this new generation of consoles has been out for over a year and we still have not had any mind-blowing game releases like Bioshock or anything like that. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's just the fact. And a lot of people might say, well, no, there's been, you know, some games that have come out for both the Xbox One and PS4 that have been pretty good, but... No, I'm, I'm here to say no, that's not true. Um, there has not been any great game releases. Um, Bloodborne comes out at midnight tonight. I think that's going to be the first great game of 2015. Unfortunately, people that own an Xbox One are going to miss out on that game. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, definitive edition releases are not going away anytime soon because, like I said... Gamers need games to play, and without any new IPs on the horizon, people are going to continue to buy these re-releases, period. At least Devil May Cry, like I said, was lowered to $39.99 instead of $59.99, which is the only reason I picked that game up. Other Definitive Edition games have, pri have a price points of brand new games, and that's what I have a huge issue with. Don't sell me a game from two years ago and then try to charge me $60 like it's a brand new game. You know, these game companies get, uh, get away with it though because there's nothing to play. People are so starved for games to play that they release these uh, definitive editions with a couple DLC packs, you know, like, you know, like tacked on. And then they charge $60 for it and people are going to buy it. Simply because there is nothing else to play. Um, at this point, 2015 is looking pretty lame. I mean, nothing's really coming out in April. May, you have The Witcher 3. June, you have Batman. But honestly, that's all that's coming out um, for the next few months. And with Uncharted 4 being pushed back all the way to 2016, I mean... That just leaves 2015 looking even worse as far as new game releases. Granted, Uncharted 4 was only coming out for the PlayStation 4. So, and that's another topic. I mean, I kind of feel bad for Xbox One owners right now because the PlayStation 4 has seen the Order 1886 recently come out, which, let's be honest, people, Xbox One folks, you guys aren't missing anything from not playing the Order it was a glorified interactive movie with 80% cutscenes, and the action that was in the game was really fucking lame. So you didn't miss anything on that one. But then you have Bloodborne coming out for the PlayStation 4 only uh, at midnight tonight. And you guys are really going to miss out on that one. And I feel bad for um, Xbox One owners because besides Sunset City Overdrive, 
um, what really has come out for the Xbox One that's worth playing. Um, I mean, you had the Master Chief Halo Collection and any cross-console game that comes out, I'm going to buy it for the PlayStation 4 simply because the PlayStation 4 is the more powerful system. And look, I have both systems, so I could say that, yes, the PlayStation 4 is the more powerful system. The games do look better on the PlayStation 4. Don't get me wrong, the Xbox One is fun, but it just doesn't have the game lineup that the PS4 has. So, at any rate, getting back to the topic of these Definitive Edition games, in my opinion, my final opinion is I'm glad that they're here, and I hope that they continue to come out. I just would hope that they lower the price point on the games, and that they only release Definitive Edition games on titles that deem it worthwhile like don't give us any more saints row 4 like re-releases we don't need to replay that garbage it sucked on the playstation 3 and xbox 360 and it sucks on the playstation 4 and xbox one period so if you're going to re-release these games make sure they're awesome games you know re-release demon souls or something like that that would be you know fucking amazing you know if they uh, re-release that you know that would be awesome um, but without these definitive edition games, there would be nothing to play right now on either the PS4 or Xbox One. So I say keep them coming until these game developers pull their heads out of their asses and give us some games worth playing. Um, and to be honest with you, that might be a while. <laughs> um, that might be all the way until 2016 or 2017 until like anything really mind-blowing comes out for the Xbox One or PS4. So, At any rate, I thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And feel free to comment with your thoughts on this subject below. I would love to hear what others think about it. And if you think this is a good trend or a bad trend, agree, disagree. I just want to hear some uh, feedback from you guys. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day or evening, depending on when you're checking out this video. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you.